Hi, everybody. My name is Darlene Rondo, and I'm the Vice President, Best Practices for Leonardo's Online Merchandising Group, and I'll be your host for today's event. Welcome to today's webinar, which is Destination Website, Drive More Direct Bookings with Visuals. Just a few housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be recording the webinar, and at the conclusion of today's session, we'll be sending you a thank you for joining us email with a link to that recording which you can share or listen to again at your leisure. Additionally, and I see some of you have already located your questions dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel. So as we move through our discussion today, please feel free to send in your questions and we'll address them throughout our webinar as well as at the end of today's presentation. We're also going to be tweeting during today's discussion, so you can send in your questions via Twitter or just join in the conversation at hashtag LeoWebinar. Before we begin, I'd like to engage the audience and ask everybody uh, this poll question. And the poll question I'm going to launch is, what is your greatest challenge on your hotel website? And I'd like you to uh, chime in and give us a sense of what your greatest challenge is. And the uh, answers you can choose from are how to tell a story that stands out or how to source my content on my website, how to keep that content up to date, and then lastly, optimizing the uh, website for mobile devices. So those are the four answers and I'm just looking at everyone weighing in here. It looks like kind of neck and neck is how to tell a story that stands out um, uh, in conjunction with keeping the content up to date followed by optimizing the website for mobile devices. So, uh, but uh, by and large it looks like how to tell a story that stands out is really the um, is really the one that's getting uh, getting everybody's uh, attention. So uh, let's see. Okay, the majority of you have weighed in, so thanks again, everyone. That really helps us as we move through our webinar today understand what to emphasize and then also how to um, position future content in some of our webinars. So thanks again for sharing your thoughts with us and we'll continue with the uh, formal portion of our webinar. First I'd like to introduce our special guest. I will like to welcome Tim Peter. Tim helps companies put the web to work to grow their business. Since 1995, Tim's developed innovative e-commerce and digital marketing programs across multiple industries. He's an expert in e-commerce and digital marketing strategy and focuses on the growth of social, local, mobile web and its impact on both consumer behavior and business results. Prior to founding Tim Peter and Associates, which is a full service e-commerce and internet marketing consulting firm in 2011, Tim worked with the world's largest hotel franchiser and the world's premier independent luxury hotel representation firm to really help hotels and resorts achieve more than $2 billion in online revenue. Thanks so much for joining us, Tim. Thank you. And I would also like to welcome Emma Richard. Emma is the e-commerce manager with Ocean Partners Associates in Cocoa Beach, Florida, handling their digital and print marketing, maintenance of social media, third-party travel sites, and brand and vanity websites for their five hotels in the Cocoa Beach area. After a 20-year career as a hairdresser, Emma decided that it was time for a change of careers and scenery as well as weather and moved with her family from Maryland to sunny Florida where she was offered the position of membership director with a local chamber of commerce setting her up for a move into the hospitality and travel industry. Emma, so good to have you with us today as well. Thanks. Today's topic is all about how to improve your guest website experience to ultimately drive bookings. Start by combining all of your media to engage travelers at all phases of their journey. 
source both professional and social imagery to serve up what consumers are looking for. And content is snackable when it's designed for simple and flexible audience consumption. Instagram videos are a really good example of snackable content as are infographics, which every marketer seems to be into these days. They're short and engaging. So encourage your guests to share their experience with others and make sure that your imagery has those share buttons. And don't forget to optimize those visuals with keywords and uh, HTML meta tags and hashtags, etc. So at this point, I am uh, going to turn the presentation over to Tim, and Tim is going to take it from here. Great. Thank you so much, Darlene. I appreciate the warm welcome and the introduction, and thank you all for attending today. Very much appreciate it. Now, obviously, what we want to talk about, uh, what most hotels want to talk about is their need to have an effective website, a need to drive bookings and help their customers achieve their goals. And to do that, I'd like to talk a little bit about curling. Now, I'm sure some of you are watching the Olympics, and if you haven't seen curling, it's this really silly, fun sport. I don't know if any of you curl. I don't mean to diminish it. It's a cool sport where they slide a rock, a stone, down the down the uh, track, down the ice, and do this to try to get closest to the goal that they possibly can to score points and win. And to make this happen, they've got other people on the ice who are brushing furiously to make sure that that rock goes precisely where they want it to go. Because what they're trying to do is eliminate friction. They want that rock to slide as, as seamlessly and as smoothly towards the goal as possible. And really, that's what your customers want, too, when they're online. They want to achieve their goal, and your job, as much as possible, is to eliminate friction, is to make it easy for your customers to achieve their goals. When you help your customers achieve your goals, you will achieve your goals far more effectively. Now, to do that, we really focus on a couple of areas. First, you focus on the customer. Second, you focus on the content. And third, you focus on conversion. You focus on bringing those three areas together, telling a seamless story, telling a smooth story that helps your customers find their way towards their goal in a way that is absolutely frictionless so that you can achieve the conversions that you're looking for. Now, I'm sure we all know about the customer purchase path, the guest purchase path. And your customer, your guest, as they're doing their, their work, go through a variety of, of um, pieces of the process. They dream, they discover, they research, they book, they anticipate the stay, they stay with you, and afterwards they remember. I mean, just look at how excited that little boy is as they're looking at this wonderful trip they're going to take, right? Well, it's kind of a lie. That's not really what happens. And the reason is because these are busy, busy people. Your, your guests, your customers are very busy people. They work hard. They've got to take care of their kids. They've got to take care of their parents in many cases. They've got to take care of their pets. They volunteer in their community. They've got to drive their kids to school or to clubs or things along those lines. It seems to me that they deserve a nice experience when deciding where they're going to travel. And so what you want to do is make sure that your story enables them to make a good decision and does so in a frictionless fa uh, fashion. Clearly, your customers are overwhelmed by the amount of information that's out there. There are more than 300 million photos uploaded every single day to Facebook, and that's just one channel. Of course, when we talk about all the channels that customers can use, this is a typical mobile phone screen today. And every single one of these apps provides opportunities for your guests to find information about hotels, to research, to learn, and to find more information about what they care about. 
but that obviously becomes kind of overwhelming. There's a ton of things here, right? We've got ratings and review sites. We've got OTAs. We've got vertical media. We've got social networks. We have email. We've got the web. We've got talking on the phone to people or calling. All of these different things ideally work together to tell your story at the same time they also make it very difficult for you to cut through the clutter. Having a good story, having an effective story, can help you do just that to make you memorable and make you the hotel that they want to choose, that the guest wants to choose. The most popular websites, as I'm sure you're all aware, are Google, Facebook, and YouTube. It's where people go to find the information that they need. That's true whether they're doing this on desktop, and it's true if they're doing it on mobile. Now you'll notice many of the screenshots that I'm going to show feature mobile because mobile is a core component of your customer's experience, your guest's experience these days and how they consume information. For instance, I used to tell people how many mobile phones were in the world and how many smartphones there were owned by customers around the world. I don't do that anymore because it's much simpler to just tell you this simple fact that more people own mobile phones than own toothbrushes. Jim, I love that uh, comparison. It really does put it into perspective, and uh, I know you're going to talk about it. Uh, clearly, that's why it's so important for hotels to get their heads around and, their, importantly, their marketing strategies around mobile. Absolutely. You know, there was uh, uh, Starwood Hotels and Resorts gave their quarterly uh, uh, earnings call the other day, and the CEO noted on the call that the growth in mobile bookings is currently five times faster, five times greater than the growth that they got from traditional desktop-based e-commerce 10 years ago. And for Crazy. anybody who's been in the industry for any period of time and remembers how much growth we were seeing from the web 10 years ago, the fact that mobile is now five times larger in terms of its growth rate, that is extraordinary. We're seeing that data all over the place. This is from Google. Google uh, last year said that 45% of all searches that existed on Google last year came from mobile. All 45% of all the searches that happened came from mobile. Even more, more incredible is that those 45% accounted for 100% of all the growth in search. That doesn't mean that desktop search is declining. It simply means that its growth has pretty much peaked out. You know, Google has already reached everybody they're going to reach on desktop. Now all the growth is coming from mobile. So that is critical. As we go through this, I'm obviously going to talk about how this helps you from a search perspective and all those sorts of things. But you hey, want Tim, to call. Uh, yes. Uh, Paul from our audience is asking, what do you think that's attributed to? Is it because just uh, more people have mobile or uh, uh, companies are making it easier for people to search? So, sure. It's, it's a combination of factors. It is absolutely um, the case that more people have mobile phones. It is absolutely the case that mobile is a, is a less expensive way for people to get online than, than desktop computers used to be. So there are people who didn't ever have a, a, an internet-enabled device before who are now using them. There's an increasing comfort factor with using mobile to access the internet. And there's the fact that ultimately mobile is the most personal computer, right? You carry it with you everywhere you go all the time. It used to be true that we used to go online. Well, customers no longer go online. They are online. They carry the internet in their pocket with them everywhere they go. That's and it. so that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's changing customer behavior in a big way and will continue to because you can simply look up what you want, when you want, where you want to achieve the goal that you have at that specific time. And it is absolutely changing the way customers discover and learn about where they want to stay. And this is, uh, Tim, another question that came from Veronique, and she's asking, you're talking about searching, but she's saying people also buy on their phones, don't they, or are they still mostly buying on 
their uh, desktops? They they absolutely buy on their phones. And, and thank you for the question, Veronica uh, or Veronica. Uh, uh, appreciate it. Um, the they absolutely are buying on their phones. There are two things happening here. Um, one is they're buying on their phones, and the booking rates are going up, as Starwood said, in a big way. What's limiting the growth of phone uh, mobile bookings to some degree is that many mobile booking experiences today aren't that great still. So what many, many, many hotel companies are seeing is that in addition to getting large growth in online bookings and large growth in mobile bookings, they're suddenly seeing a rise in phone bookings because at the end of the day, your customer is still holding a phone in their hands. That's right. And so one of the best practices, and we can talk about this a little bit more later, but one of the best practices is making sure that on your mobile website, if you build a mobile website or if you make your current website responsive to a mobile device, you make sure that the phone number is clearly visible and is tappable so that a, a customer can simply uh, tap on it with their finger and dial your, your call center unless you don't want them to call. Now that would obviously be introducing friction and that may not be a good thing. I strongly recommend it. There are some cases for some people where if you can't answer the phone 24 hours a day or regularly or things along those lines, you may not want to direct them to a place where they can't actually call you. Great. Excellent. Thanks, Tim. No problem. So since we're talking about search a moment ago, you know, it's important to note how much search has changed and how much the content you make available on your website can power search effectively. But if we think about it, we have natural search, we have paid search today, we have images, the carousel, and, and that actually has a lot to do both with the images you make available as well as content that you have on your site. We have maps, which again, speaks to mobile because mobile is highly location based so it's not just where the, the mobile device knows where you are where it knows where the guest is so it wants to show here's where the hotels are relative to where the guest is we have ratings and reviews and price ads that actually show the prices right there to the guest obviously I mentioned ratings and reviews we have personalized search where the if we think about it the search engines now know who you are, where you are, when you're interested, if you've told them your dates, which is how we're getting the price ads, what it is you want, and to some degree, why you care. So really, they're doing everything they can to answer those questions for the guest and make it easy for them to answer their questions. And so you're going to need to make sure your content helps answer those questions as well. Now, when we talk about personalized search, in some cases, it is implicit because of what we know. We know the location of the mobile device or we know the place you've typed in you want to go. But you can also choose and give explicit instructions to the search engine that I want to look at certain you know, star ratings, hotel class, user ratings. Or I can do things like say, I'm only looking for results near a specific place or that have been updated within a specific time. So really, there's a lot of information available to the customer to help them make a decision and help drive them towards their ultimate goal. Which leads to the question of what is a search engine now? If we think about it, obviously we've got things like Google, we have things like Bing, we have things like the OTAs, and we have things like the, social, uh, the ratings and review sites. But increasingly, we're looking at things like voice search, where people can actually just ask their phone, either through Google Conversational Search or Siri, find me a hotel. And if you've seen Google Now, Google Now actually begins to show you details before you search for them. So for instance, I'm a big Mets fan, and obviously this, this is from a, uh, last season, but it shows here's when the next Mets game is being played before I ever searched for it. There are examples where it will show you restaurants near you because the search engine knows it's lunchtime. So here's restaurants near to you. And increasingly, you're, I expect you're going to see, I haven't seen this in the wild yet, but I expect you're going to see that as you're driving down the I-95 corridor or you're driving across Route 66 or you're driving across Europe or on Eurorail, you're going to see Google Now and probably Siri and probably Bing make guided recommendations to say, 
here are hotels near to where you are now because you've been driving for a long time today. Maybe you're getting sleepy, so why don't you stop off at the next exit and see these hotels. Search is anticipating the need before the guest even asks for it. Now, again, the point is we want to reduce friction. We want to make this as easy as possible for guests. To do that, your site needs to be content rich. You need to think about the questions that your guests have and, and answer those. The search engines are anticipating what it is the guest, are going to, the guest is going to ask. You want to do the same thing with your site. You want to make it context rich. Make sure that you understand the context in which your guest is accessing this information and be responsive to that need. So for instance, if someone's on a mobile device, it's likely they want to use, they want to call you on the phone. Make sure the phone number is clearly visible above the fold. Make sure your address is clearly visible so that they can quickly tap and go to a map and get, you know, find their way to you. It needs to be keyword rich so that you've got the right keywords for the search engines to find you and you show up where you want to be in the search rankings. And of course, it needs to be customer focused. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's the key, is focusing on your guest, focusing on your customer. To do that, make your content snackable, shareable, and sharp. When I say snackable, I mean that it needs to be short, concise, easy for people to consume when they have a down moment. So you're picking your kids up from school, you have a couple of moments, you want to look at some potential hotel options for the trip you're taking this weekend, let's go ahead and take a look and can I read it on my phone, can I scan it quickly? And if I'm on my desktop, I may only have a moment you know, between meetings at the office. Let me be able to pull this up quickly and answer my questions quickly. You want to make it shareable. So one of the most effective ways to increase your marketing effectiveness is to get your guests to tell your story for you. Make sure that it's easy for them to say, wow, this is a really cool image. Let me go ahead and post that to my Instagram feed or, or to my Pinterest board or to Facebook and tell your story on your behalf. It's a great thing to be able to do. And of course, you want to make it sharp. It needs to be clear. It needs to be concise. It needs to be focused on answering your guests' questions in a, in a compelling and rich way. So for instance, let's say you're in the market to buy I don't know, a curling brush, right? You want to go ahead and start playing curling because you think it's a really cool sport. The Olympics have got you all excited about it. You go online. Now, I use Amazon as an example of this, of these sorts of things a lot because clearly they are the biggest e-commerce player. They do things very, very well. So let's take a look at what they're doing here. They lead with a really big image. They make it really simple for you to see the product and see what it looks like. They offer a variety of images, both here and here, that you can choose from. So you can see the product in many different forms. They make the content, again, very snackable. Here's your price, here's shipping, here's what's in stock, here are different colors, here's the size, etc. Right, real quick. Notice the bulleted text, the bulleted copy that displays things quickly and consumably, easily snackable. And they make it shareable. Hey, I'm checking out this, this brush. Let me go ahead and share that on Pinterest or tell my friends on Twitter I want to buy myself a curling brush. They don't just do it with products like curling brushes. They do it with things like flash memory. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that flash memory might be the most boring product you could ever buy. You need a new memory card for your camera, and yet still, we have a big image. Show the thing nice and clearly to make sure that this is actually the product the customer wants. We've got lots of images, so you can see it lots of different ways. We've got this real snackable content that ex you know explains we've got packaging, frustra frustration-free packaging, makes it really easy. We've got the different capacities. We've got nice content here that explains, again, what we're looking at. And even this is shareable. The funny part about this is if this image over here isn't good enough for you, we even have a bigger image so you can see this blown up. Imagine if this was a product that anyone actually cared about. Right? You have a beautiful hotel. You have a wonderful hotel. You have a wonderful story to tell about your hotel. 
shouldn't you do the same for your guests that Amazon is doing when they're selling flashcards? So if we look at an example from the hospitality or from the travel industry, let's look at Booking.com. Clearly, they're doing a very good job of this. We know this. I'm sure you're all experiencing an uptick in bookings from people like Booking.com. And what are they doing? Well, big images. Again, sell that story right up front. Look at how lovely this hotel is. Lots of images to choose from. So the guest can see what matters to them. We've said for years that a picture is worth a thousand words. They're actually giving you thousands of words because they've got tons of pictures. A lot of easily snackable content, property highlights, free Wi-Fi, free parking, an outdoor pool, non-smoking rooms, highly rated for families and shopping. Look at how simply they answer those questions right up front. Now, they don't provide the ability to share the content, but what they do is they use social in a different way and tell you what other people think about this property, tell you what other people think about this hotel. So they're using social in a way that helps tell that story. They are also using that search, uh, excuse me, that social content to create more content about the hotel so it becomes very content rich and very keyword rich to help with their online search rankings. Now if we look at an individual hotel, we see similar examples. This is the Roger Smith in New York. Again, big image right up front. Let's go ahead and show you the room that you're going to be in. Multiple images to choose from. Now, I will tell you, I don't know if anybody from the Roger Smith is on the call. This auto rotates, but you can click on these. I'd question whether or not that's entirely clear to the guest that that's what they could do. Maybe some arrows to show that they can go through this would be helpful. But again, at least they're giving lots of options to the guest to see what's out here. The other they're thing I love... Uh, Kim, yeah, about don't. this is uh, not only do they have a very large visual, but as you're about to point out, they have the story that goes with the visual they're looking at. Uh, and I like uh, at the bottom where they have that uh, quote. Where, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice touch. Absolutely. So what they've done here, and, and Darlene, you're exactly right. They've made the content Snackable, notice this is broken up into multiple paragraphs and there's different formatting to highlight different things and draw the guest's eye to different bits of information. But they've done it in a more narrative format. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't always have to be bullet points. You can absolutely use a paragraph, but notice they've focused on answering questions right up front, but made it in such a way that people can snack on this. I don't have to read the whole page. I don't have to scroll for page after page. The content's all there if I want to, but it starts with, let me give you a quick paragraph up front. Let me give you another paragraph. Let me give you a poll quote from a review so that you get what other people think of this. It's just brilliantly done in terms of making that very snackable and very sharp. They, of course, have a content-rich site overall because they've created multiple pages for each of the things that the customer might care about. So where's their location? Tell me about the rooms and suites. Tell me about specials. Tell me about events. Tell me about the bars. Tell me about arts at this. And look, they even have a blog that they update pretty much every day with new content to keep it fresh and keep it top of mind. And then from a shareable perspective, uh, this is this is one of my favorite examples. They actually do it a little different. They again, the the they hide it until you mouse over it. But they they offer you a choice of social networks to share this. Right, Facebook, Flickr. Twitter, and YouTube. And what I like about this is they're not trying to be everywhere. They're saying, here are the places that work for us and for our guests to tell our story most effectively. And so what they've done is they've focused their attentions on the social networks where they can do best. You know, it's easy to assume that because there are all these options, we need to be everywhere. And that's usually not a winning strategy because if you can't do it well everywhere, you're often better off letting the guests do that for you. What they're doing here is saying, here's the places we're going to do our very best job where we can tell our story most effectively and let's focus our attention on those to get the best results. So we've been talking all this time about friction. We've been talking all this time about how you remove friction. 
again, the way you want to do that for your guest is focus. You want to focus on your customer, you want to focus on content, and you want to focus on converting those customers. Your content rules to make that happen are make it snackable, shareable, and sharp. And just as we've seen in the Olympics, your, your uh, customers are obviously looking to achieve their goals. These folks are looking to achieve their goals. You're looking to achieve your goals. You want to win the gold. Focus. Excellent. Thanks so much, Tim. And just to summarize for everyone, um, can, uh, Tim's content today, um, really what uh, the essence of his message is that people's time is precious these days. So organize and present your content so that it can be consumed easily and quickly just like an afternoon snack. So think of it that way because often, you know, snackable is this term, uh, Tim, I think you'd agree, that really has popped up in the last 12, 15 months or so. And so I often get these questions about what does that really mean? Well, it's just, you know, it's easily digestible and you can grab it quickly just like an afternoon snack. And then people love to share good stories, you know, um, look at the Roger Smith Hotel as an example, right? So focus on creating an informative and compelling hotel story that shoppers are going to want to share with others before, during, and after their stay. And then being clear about what you offer will help consumers cut through the clutter of choices really in a way that makes you stand out and make that short list of options to choose from. So again, uh, Tim, lots of great questions came in during your section. Lots more that we can come back and answer if we have time at the end. So uh, thanks again for your perspective. Very, very helpful. My pleasure. And uh, now I'd like to welcome back Emma Richard. And uh, Emma is going to talk to us about how she makes it real from a hotel perspective. Tim talked to us about, um, you know, sort of an, an industry level perspective on the subject of um, visual marketing on your web site. And Emma's going to talk to us now about how she does it for her properties at Ocean Partners and Associates. So Emma, please take it from here. Thanks, Darlene. Um, hello, everybody. Um, again, I, I'm going to talk about how pictures tell stories. And, and pictures really do tell a story. There's been lots of great quotes over um, about how pictures tell that a picture worth a thousand words. And all of those social content, social media sites that I have up there are really, um, are, are really photo driven. You know, a TripAdvisor allows somebody to put a photo up there. If they see something good, they see something bad, they see something with their family. And a lot of times that content really is out and people don't want to read. They, they want information fast. They want it at their fingertips. Like I said, they have it on their smartphone. They have it on a tablet. And a picture tells so much more. I mean, you can read a bad review or you can see an image and it's not a good image, and that's a review in itself because it gives it validity. Um, and also, what their friends are recommending, you know, on TripAdvisor as well. You have, you know, what your friends, you know, have your friends been there? Um, they've reviewed that property, so it all go, kind of goes back to that Facebook. Um, and uh, Emma, there's a question that's come in from Peter. And he's saying, we've been talking about static images. And he's asking, is there a role for video and virtual tours? And I know you have some thoughts about that. Oh, yeah. People love video. I mean, they love, and, and that's one of the reasons why Instagram has gone to do an Instagram video. People love it. I mean, look at how YouTube is really used as such a huge search engine for everything. Um, and so, in fact, you know, YouTube, I, right, is the second largest ser search engine in the world, more than a yeah, billion which just, videos are viewed yeah, a day which is just on absolutely content. crazy to me that people will use a you know a video as a, as a search engine, but it's mm -hmm. the truth, and you know, and that's when they look to see a movie because they want to see a clip of it because they've remembered the name, but they're not really sure, and so they use it, and then they see that clip, and they it reminds them, or of a band, or of anything. I mean, mm -hmm. the number of hours people will sit there and watch children, you know, babies do something crazy or pets is just insane. And I know um, you're going to talk more about that in a couple of minutes. 
<laughs> exactly. So where I come from, we have five hotels here in the Cocoa Beach area. So roughly in Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral, there's about 3,000 hotel rooms. So our group, our group makes up about a third of those hotel rooms. Um, which is pretty good odds once you get visitors to Cocoa Beach to get into staying at one of our hotels. But however, in Florida, we have 663 miles of beach in Florida, not to mention the big elephant in Florida, which is Orlando, and all of its attractions. So I kind of always feel like my number one job is to get people to my beach. How do I get them to Cocoa Beach? And then how do we make it an experience? How do we engage them afterwards so that they continue to come back and they see it as that's our beach? That's our vacation spot. And so that's kind of we're using Stay Cocoa Beach as a mantra and then using the hashtag so that we can track it in social conversations. Um, all of our hotels but one have a vanity site. And um, so this clip just kind of tells you, the, shows you the difference between, um, really easily the difference between a vanity site and a brand site. Um, if you notice on the left is our, is our um, vanity site for our courtyard. It lists free fun what to do in the area for those families that are free, our packages, our bistro, and then the biggest part of our packages is our cruise deals because we're located so closely to Port Canaveral, that's a good chunk of our business. And then of course, real large, where do, how do I make reservations, which take you back to the brand site. Because the brand site, those tabs are smaller and it's really hard. Our deals and promotions, are they packages um, or are they not? and how, which ones are cruise ones. So we try to make it very large. And then, of course, don't miss out and join our e-club, which I'll talk about a little bit too. So, But it reminds people, hey, I want to keep in contact with them. We're also um, in the process of making our sites responsive. Um, and responsive simply means no matter what size screen, from your smartphone to a tablet to a monitor, all of that information is going to be easy to read and easy to navigate through. Um, something that we just recently started, um, actually in January, was our Stay Cocoa Beach blog. Um, and the blog is just simply to remind people to stay Cocoa Beach. Um, and you can find it at staycocoabeach.blogspot.com. You know? <laughs> Got to put in that plug for it. Um, it has a couple of purposes. It feeds uh, course content onto our social sites. Um, it also shows p potential visitors what events are coming in the area and then also links to them. Of course, the link doesn't take them away from the blog. It just simply opens up another window so they can kind of see maybe buy tickets. If they buy tickets, they need a place to stay. And then, of course, the, then the bottom of it has um, information on our hotels. Um, it also feeds content into our newsletter. Um, and our newsletters that go out to different travel agents, again, showing them why their customers should come to the Cocoa Beach area and then where they can stay. So I love this slide. Um, it really talks about, um, it really shows social media it, it just, uh, just perfectly. Um, but it's not all cats and babies. But you have to remember that cats and babies are the top two items that are shared on photos that are shared on Facebook. So it's really important to remember that when you're coming up with content. You have to make it first and most of all fun. And you have to make it shareable. And that's how you're going to increase your fans. You have to know who your fans are on Facebook. Um, and your other social sites. For a hotel, most of them are your past guests and also your future guests. They've booked their trip. Maybe they booked their trip because they found your Facebook page. Or maybe afterwards they were looking for more information about you and went to your Facebook page. So you want to engage them. Get them ready to come to their, to, on their trip. Or if they've already been, look, show them photos around the hotel. Show them photos of people that they know, so that they remember, so that they want to come back. And you want them to remember their experience, connect with those staff members again that they loved when they were here, and make sure they keep up with them. Um, one of the things that's real important, too, is to also have a plan. You never want to so start something that you're not going to put content in, because then it just looks dead. So have a social media plan. Maybe you just start off with Facebook. Maybe you add Twitter. You start off with Facebook and you're just going to post every other day. And then you're going to move to every day. But always have some sort of plan um, for your social content. 
um, uh, uh, yes. from the um, audience, Ellen is asking, um, how do I know which social channels to start with to tell my story? YouTube is a big one because most people have a, a hotel video. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a great one to kind of start as a place to house your video. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook is used by everybody. Um, and right. so that's kind of a, 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 you know, a kind of a given. Some people like Twitter, some don't. Um, I happen to really like Twitter a lot. Um, and it, it drives traffic back to, and I use it to drive traffic back to my Facebook pages. Um, Instagram is all about photos. So um, that's a great one, but again, you know, that it has to be something that's kept up on. Um, so that yes. would be one that I probably wouldn't use unless you had somebody who was going to do that. Um, the and same I think thing it's fair to say, and I think it's uh, fair to say, Emma, you know, you should be on the channels where your guests are. Exactly. And so, right. So if uh, you find that your guests are uh, gravitating to Facebook or if they're gravitating to Pinterest as an example, then that's where you should be. And I think as uh, Tim mentioned earlier, as the Roger Smith Hotel does, right, they're limiting uh, their social channels because, you know, it can really get crazy in a heartbeat, right? There's just so many of them out there. And there's more coming every day. I mean, there's always people are starting new channels all the time. Um, you know, one of the things we that um, we had done too is to go on to Foursquare to see how many people had checked in. And mm -hmm. if you've got a lot of people that have checked in, then maybe you really need to start your Foursquare page, move all those check-ins over to it, and start doing some offers, or because that's one that your guests are already using. So there are really ways to kind of yeah. see what what they're looking at. You know, right. Um, so this is um, some other places I would suggest, like on the Facebook, on your Facebook page, the large photo is called Cover Photo Space. Use that photo space. Use it to announce new happenings, new packages, any specials. Um, that's huge ad space for you. Um, one of the things that we noticed, we have this package called the Port Park and Cruise Package, and and I listed it up in the top as Stay, Play, and Sale. Well. And, but the name of the package is there as well. Well, we noticed when we pulled keywords um, that were searched for, that pulled up in our area, stay, play, and sale was on that list. So, hmm. and, and this is the only place we have it is on our cover photo. That's interesting. So, yeah, so I, th yeah, I thought that was really fascinating. So that's a place where you know, you're able to, to put some advertisement out, but keep it, again, in that fun, fresh, and especially for a hotel, you've got in a touristy kind of way, or if you're all business, in a business mm -hmm. sort of way, depending That's on what right. type so, of yeah, guest you exactly. have in your hotel. Exactly. You know? Stick true to your brand. Exactly. Um, and then, of course, also on ours, we have our Instagram feed, which we, instead of having Instagrams for each hotel, we just have it as Stay Cocoa Beach. Then our guests know by we have um, posters up around to keep uh, keep active with us socially after you visited that if they take photos around depending on what brand they do a hashtag courtyard CB those are the only ones those photos taken of the courtyard show up on the courtyards page so that we can keep it brand specific Excellent. so unless they use that hashtag it's not showing up on the brand site and the same thing with our Twitter feed as all well. we have mm -hmm. it connected. Um, so really what I wanted to say to everybody is really keep it fun. Uh, you don't want to oversell to your guests. That's not why they're on Facebook. They're on Facebook and social sites to connect with their friends and their family and share pictures of cats and babies. So if you do sell to them, and, and we are all about selling hotel rooms, and we're all after a special, um, this was one we did. We offered during the government shutdown was a fur location special. Make it fun. Put a graphic in there that's fun because that's going to get shared. Um, we ended up getting a lot of traction from that special just because people saw the, the image, thought it was funny, and it, they shared it. A lot of our, our uh, Visit Florida group, our Tourism and Development Council here for the 
for the uh, county shared it, and it got a lot of traction because of that. Um, you want them to connect with people that they that they met on their trip. You know, the front desk clerks and the bar people at the bar, and and they and comment back when they make comments of, oh, say hi to Mike for me. You know comment back and say, you know, Mike really wishes you, you know, looks forward to you coming back. Comment back to people because that's really, really what it is. It's, it's a conversation. It's a social conversation and people want to be engaged. Excellent. Thanks, Emma. Um, really great insights from a hotelier who clearly, uh, you know, you clearly have your uh, head and your strategy around what you want to do uh, in terms of web marketing across not only your vanity site, but also all the other outlets that you're marketing your hotel on. So again, lots of great questions from uh, the audience. Uh, one from uh, Janelle, Emma, and she wants to know, do you recommend integrating your social media platform um, to post the content simultaneously, or do you post different content on different uh, social platforms? Um, Great I, I mix it up because a lot of times you'll have somebody is following you on Facebook and they're also following you on Twitter and they might be following you also on their Google Plus page. You don't want to ran, you don't want to hit that person with that same piece of information. And the same thing when I have, you know, the five hotels that I do, you're never going to see the same post going out to all five hotels all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I, I always change it up and Excellent. mix it up. And a, another question from uh, Veronique. She wants to know, do you use Facebook contests very often? I haven't. Um, I would like to find a, and that's one of the things. As I said, you you know, work on a plan. Um, I heard it mentioned once that uh, a site did a, hey, we want to gain more fans. So if you know, we'll run this contest, and if you are the 500th fan, you win a free iPad. Well, you're not really gaining fans of your site. You're gaining fans of a free iPad. And so that kind of resonates in me of how do we go ahead and do a, a contest. Um, I think we, we've kind of talked about the possibility of maybe doing photo contests where people can send photos of their, of their vacation and maybe we take a couple of hotel employees and pick the best photo and then we send them something you know, for your photo being taken. Something that keeps it really relevant and keeps it relevant to the property and not just, I'm trying to build a fan base of people that are not going to come and not going to be engaged. No, good point. Good point. So uh, the really the takeaways from Emma's section is that you really want to create content, as we've said a couple of times, that is fresh and up-to-date source content from your surroundings, your CVBs, the local events, so that you can keep it current and entertaining. And social means social, so have fun, show your personality, and you can still do that and keep it on brand. And then, uh, as we talked about, you know, you really want to stay away from blatant selling. You want to engage people first in a way that reflects your hotel's brand and then provide opportunity uh, for them to take advantage of your offers. A simple example of this is really just to ensure that your Facebook apps have all the links to your booking engine or to your uh, splash pages and um, you know website links back to your um, to uh, create direct bookings, click to call if it's mobile, as, as Tim talked about, or your reservations phone numbers. So lastly, uh, we are going to launch one more poll. We'd really like everybody's, um, everybody to weigh in and tell us what they thought of today's content. So and the way we ask that is, based on what you heard today, will you attend another webinar in the future on a different topic? And so I'd like to hear back from everyone to see um, whether you found the content valuable. And if so, then uh, you're likely to join us again. So uh, thanks, everybody, uh, for weighing in on that. We really appreciate it.
So we are going to continue with the last uh, pieces of our webinar. Uh, so just a brief word about Leonardo's visual storytelling platform called Vibrosure, and this is actually what Emma uses in her uh, marketing efforts as her visual storytelling platform. And we offer this solution to hotel marketers to really help you achieve some of your key business objectives, which include reaching and engaging consumers while they're shopping, communicating the value you're providing so that you just don't sell on price, and then it's an opportunity to set yourself apart from your competition so that the shopper chooses your property with the certainty that it's the right choice for them. And uh, we invite you to join us on upcoming webinars. March's topic is going to be targeting specific customer segments, and in particular, we're going to be talking about how to target corporate customers. And then in April, the topic is about social media. So please, if uh, you have the time and the topic is interesting to you, we'd love for you to join us. We're going to be, as I said up front, uh, we recorded the webinar. So we're going to send you a thank you for joining us email with a link to that recording. And again, lots of great questions came in uh, during the webinar. Uh, most of which we were able to answer, but some that we were not able to. So um, uh, we are going to also do a follow-up email to everybody, just recapping the highlights of some of the questions that we heard on uh, today's webinar. So I've put the contact information up on the screen for a couple of minutes. Again, Tim Peter, thank you so much for giving us your industry perspective on the topic. Uh, how to drive more direct bookings with visuals. Very, very helpful. And I know our audience really appreciated your insight. And Emma, Richard, always really important for our audience to hear from a hotelier uh, what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I know uh, very generous of you to share your time and all of your great examples for what you're doing at Ocean Partners. So thanks again, Emma. And to everybody in the audience, really great uh, questions. Thanks for participating and listening. And please join us next time on another webinar. So have a great rest of your week, everybody. Bye-bye.